GitHub Actions makes it really easy to automate your release workflow. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to continue looking at GitHub Actions. Yeah, so in the last episode, we talked about doing just like a simple you know, build and test type of CI workflow where every time there's a pull request submitted or any time somebody commits to master, it does a simple compile my app, run the tests, report the results to me. Uh, what we're going to look at today is more of a release type workflow. And there's lots of different ways that you can do this. This isn't necessarily the way that might be best for your project, but it's something that I found worked really well for me for my little kind of open source projects where the output of that project is a, a NuGet package. So the idea that what I want to do here is I want to be able to come into GitHub and create a new release, say what version it is, and then have that process automated that now it's going to go and create a NuGet package that links back to this release where the release notes will be in GitHub. Um, and eventually push that uh, NuGet package right automatically to NuGet. So for now, what I'm going to do is just create a, uh, it'll be a get us part of the way there. We're going to generate that NuGet package on a release trigger. So when the release gets created, we'll generate that NuGet package. And for now, we're just going to upload it to, as a publish it as an artifact of that uh, GitHub action run or that workflow run. And the, the part of moving it over to NuGet we'll just do manually for now. And then in the next episode, we'll look at automating that using the NuGet task. So. Nifty. So same as we did last time, we're going to come in here to Actions and hit New Workflow. I'll just pick the .NET Core one as a starting point here. Um, I'm going to call this my Release Workflow. And this is going to be a release to NuGet. I'm never sure if there's it's an uppercase G or not. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't seem super consistent from how Microsoft even uses it. So, okay, so here I'm going to say that I want this to happen on release, and the types. Where's my autocomplete here? Oh, now you've lost it. Oh, that's it. It's yeah, I'm, I'm done for. Slide. Yeah, without that, it was speed. There should be a types here, and I'm not seeing it. I think this harkens back to like this blog post from years ago that was like, is Visual Studio ruining your brains? <laughs> yeah. No, it's making our jobs easier and more bearable. Okay, so. I do need to put this types published here. Uh, the first time I ran this, it, I I tried it with just you know the when a re on release, and for some reason I was getting three every time I'd create a release I'd get three uh, builds triggered and running in parallel doing the exact same thing. And it turns out there's like three different types of uh, release triggers that happen. So the the one that we're interested in is when we're publishing the release here. And I'll have this run on Ubuntu again. And the we're going to use .NET Core, uh, but not 2.2 because this project is 3.1.101. I think you can actually just do .x here, and it'll automatically get the the latest version that's available. That's good. Uh, and this uh, this part here, I'm actually going to copy over because there's a, a few interesting things, and I'm copying it from another project where I set this up, which was our GenFu project. Okay, so. Instead of running .NET build here, what I'm going to do is run .NET pack. So pack is the command that creates a new get package for us. And again, here I've Got a error in our indentation, which is just so important with YAML. Um, okay, so first, there's a bunch of 
things that I'm passing in here as parameters to the .NET pack command. One of them is the configuration. I, of course, want to do this using the release configuration. Um, the one that's a little bit interesting here is that I want the version of the package that I create to be linked to the version of this release that was just created. So I can get that through a variable name that GitHub Actions makes available here called github.event.release.tagname. So that, is, that means that when I create the release, the tag name I give it has to be like a semver mm -hmm. compatible version. The next thing is I'm linking over to release notes. So what I'm going to do is then in, on the NuGet package, when it when you go to the package up in on the NuGet site, under release notes, we'll have a link back to here so that I don't have to write out the release notes in multiple places. I can just have everything linked back to GitHub here. That'll be the source of truth for the the release itself. So this That's is fantastic. this guy here. So linking back to, again, using that um, tag name variable, to get back to that specific release. And last thing I need to do is set my working directory, which if we go back and look at the workflow we created last time, I'll make sure that I get that right. So that's the part I got wrong last time is my working directory. Got to get those Linux slashes the right way. Right, so working directory is being at monsters.appinsights. And so that'll generate the package. Now it's sitting there on the build agent. And I want to publish it, uh, as I was saying, just as, a, as an artifact here. So I'm going to use another task called upload artifacts. And here it's going to be called application insights. Actually, what is it going to be called in this case? There's actually two packages. Just file comment? I think I can. You know what? Let's give it a try. We'll go Yay. we'll go off script. Um, <laughs> I should actually be able to just say star star slash star dot nupkeg. I hope. Probably want to reverse that direction of that slash though. Oh, again? Yeah. It um, doesn't like that. Maybe it's in quotes. Unidentified alias. Okay, let's. Uh... Name. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Okay, what am I missing here? You just give it an empty string, it doesn't like that, right? There you go. Strange. I didn't have it in, in a string format before. I might just not have liked the, the star star stuff. Yeah, okay. And I want to... Oh, maybe this is oh, the way this maybe, is, maybe we need that. Yeah. I totally oh, have that the other way around. So this yeah. is the one that I want to do a star star on. Yeah. Or even an A date. Oh, reverse that slash. And probably three quotes. Yeah. Okay. And the thing that I want to name it is going to be just my packages. I can probably just give it a a simple name here. It'll they'll end up getting zipped together into one file, but I think that's okay. Now I did have trouble with trying to do the wildcard from what I remember last time I tried this. So let's just give it a try and see how it goes. I will commit this. Inadvertently created a disaster here. Yeah. It's possible. But I actually kind of need a wildcard in this case because um, this .NET pack in this case is I think going to create two different assemblies for me. Or two different NuGet packages for me. Oh, really? How come? Uh, because this project contains more than one project. Or this repo contains a couple different projects. Okay. There's an ASP.NET Core version that has its own assembly. Okay. And then like a core version. Interesting. We'll have to see what happens, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so my workflow, the CI one's running. Um, 
the release one is there. Obviously, that didn't get triggered just from checking in because it's triggered on a release. So I need to go and create a release. This is where things might get a little bit messy here, and we're going to create mm -hmm. a bunch of versions as we yeah. test this if it doesn't work the first time. But let's do a 1.1.20. Well, I'll clean it up and delete it later. So in theory, that will have triggered my release to NuGet. Just has checked out the code. It's setting up .NET Core. Now we're doing .NET pack. Mm, yeah, I'm interested to see what this produces. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. down like that. That did fail as I thought it might, but let's see if we can find out at least what packages it did create for us. Um, I think it only means one. There's one of them. And here's the other one. So oh, okay. there are two of them there. What did it complain about? It says slash nupcake does not exist. Oh. <laughs> so where did this actually end up? Let's see if these match. Home runner work. I don't think it did a lopping stuff. No. Because those those SGC should match. I assume I just have to put in the full path. Yeah. From line 35 and from line 32. Okay, let's do that. I might have to do two tasks then to make that work. But it's pretty much okay. line down from that line 35 is where we want. Yeah. It's going to be everything from that work directory, right? Down. Yeah, the working directory was only set for that previous task, so I need to start. Kind of at that beginning, I think, again. Slash bin, slash release, the file name, and then this is the part that will be variable. This is the version number. And I'll call this one. I'm going to publish two different artifacts off of this build here. One of them will be that. The other one is this one. That should be it. I'm wondering if you might need more at the beginning of that path, if you need to have like everything after slash work. Um, I don't think I do, just based on what I had in the other example that I'm looking at here. Okay. Well, let's give it a shot. Yep. Third time's a charm. That's what they say. One dot, one dot, two, two. Fortunately, these builds are reasonably quick. Mm -hmm. Working on another build right now that's uh, trying to automate something that does an npm install that takes a couple minutes to complete. Uh, it's just painful. Have you at least used npm ci for it? I have. Yeah. A little bit of savings. Yeah. All right, so that did something. Oh, that's. Oh, I was trying to figure out why that's got a 
only that half the circle is completed. And it's just detecting that there's also the CI build that's running right now. So when I go to this release here, I have these two different packages that I can download, which is a zipped up file of my NuGet package. And we'll just make sure that it actually has the right thing in it. So this should be an upkeg, which I can just rename to .zip. And then in here, the new spec file should have the data that we were looking for. There's our link back to the release notes for that version. We'll just test that out, make sure it works. There we go. So that's automating the, the creation of the NuGet packages when we do the release. And next time we'll take a look at uh, using the NuGet task to actually push that over to NuGet. Fantastic. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Remember to like, comment, share, and uh, zip up your comments too, deploy them to NuGet. Uh, we won't read them there, but uh, at least you'll know they're archived safely until NuGet goes down next week.